All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Yi Xue Zhao, and I'm from Computer Science Department. Uh, I'm also a CF Fellow at UMass Amherst. Today, I'm very excited to share my PhD work that I did at USC, where I spent the past six years trying my best to speed up your mobile apps. So let's get started. Imagine this is your phone. I know this, also, this red dots also drive me crazy, so I want to get rid of them. See, if I want to click on Facebook, then I go to this notification center and then I want to click on one notification. Boom, the annoying loading wheel. This is not what we want to see, but this is exactly what I wanted to solve in my PhD because we don't like it. When we see that, we might get angry or delete the app or even write a very bad app review. And this in turn will cause the apps company to lose a lot of money. So the main cause of this problem is the network transfer because the mobile apps have to fetch a lot of data from the remote server through the internet. And this network round trip will take some time. And to get rid of this very annoying loading wheel, one very cool solution is called prefetching and caching because it can reduce the latency, latency down to zero. And let's see how. So the idea is we can prefetch the data in advance before the user requests it, and then store the data on a local cache on the phone. And then when the end user actually requests this data, we can return the response immediately to the user from a local cache on the phone without any network. So that's why it's super fast without no latency. But the question is always, how do we do that? It sounds amazing. And actually prefetching and caching has been applied in so many problem domains successfully, but you'd be surprised on how few work there is in mobile apps specifically. And this gap is exactly what I wanted to fill in my dissertation. And I had four major elements in my dissertation. So the first one, uh, I learned from the existing literature from other domains and identified the two categories of prefetching and caching techniques that can be applied to mobile apps. The first category is content-based, meaning we can analyze the mobile app's content to figure out how do we want to prefetch. And there's no existing solutions yet for mobile apps. And the second category is history-based, meaning we can analyze the user's historical data and build some sort of prediction model to predict what requests the user will send in the future, then prefetch those. So existing solutions are actually still applicable for mobile apps, but they need to be adapted. These are two very valuable insights directly guided me on how do I want to develop my own prefetch and caching techniques for mobile apps. But don't get too excited just yet. The question is, is that a good idea? As I said, there's just so few work to target prefetch and caching in mobile apps. What if that's because it's a bad idea? So I want to first answer this to make sure this is a good idea. I did an empirical study on a lot and a lot of um, real mobile apps to figure out whether there's an opportunity for prefetching and, and caching. So the answer is yes, there's actually lots and lots of requests in the mobile apps that are both prefetchable and cacheable. So now we can confidently move to our techniques. Uh, as I said, there's no existing solutions for uh, content-based techniques on mobile apps. So I developed one, which is the first content-based technique in mobile apps that is called Paloma. Paloma is guided by two key insights. First, um, the app's code actually has everything we needed to figure out how to prefetch. Why is that? So if you think about it, um, everything about the app is written in the code. So by analyzing the app's code, we will be able to figure out all the possibilities that the user can do in the next step. Then we can just prefetch those, right? And the second insight is that there's this user think time when we decide on what to do next uh, and so on. So this can take a couple of seconds or so, uh, which provides a good opportunity for us to prefetch in the background without the end user even noticing it. So with that in mind, I developed a Paloma that first 
conducted this code analysis to look at apps code and extract some useful information such as what to prefetch and when should I prefetch, stuff like that. And based on that information, Paloma automatically rewrites the app and produces an optimized app that looks the same as the original app, but has a prefetching enabled. So that's way faster. And this whole process is automatic and doesn't require any other information except for the app itself. And in the end, it can reduce the latency to almost 100% on average. So that is pretty cool. Um, but sometimes the developers do have the historical data of the user that could be useful too, right? So I decided, that, okay, I'm also gonna explore the second category, history-based. As I mentioned, for case history-based techniques, there's already some existing solutions, but they are actually not practical to use for mobile apps. The reason is that they rely on these very, very large prediction models, and running those models are really costly because we are looking at mobile apps that are running on the mobile devices. They are resource constrained. So cost is a big issue here. I don't want that. And another thing is that those large prediction models rely on large historical data from the end users that are collected for like months or even a year. This introduces significant privacy issues. So I don't want that either. So this leads to my solution, Hip Harness, Basically, I just want very, very small prediction models for all the problem I talked about on big models. So how did I do that? Basically, I select the good training data and threw away the bad training data and also identified how much data is enough, then throw away the rest. So with this good enough training data, which is much smaller than what's used in prior work, I can build a very small prediction models that uh, has reduced the model size by 94% on average. So now the question is, we have very small models that's very practical to use on mobile apps, but are they good models? So I need to verify that, right? Uh, so I used the um, cape harness models to conduct an uh, empirical study. I studied over 10,000 mobile users using their over 15 million network requests and produced over 7 million prediction models to see whether our technique on, uh, on making very small models are good or not. So uh, these conclusions I will show you in a second uh, is based on statistically significant evidence because how big our data set is. So the conclusions are, first of all, great news. Small models do work great because not only did they reduce the model's size significantly, but at the same time, sometimes they can even improve the model's accuracy. That means the prediction models can predict the next request even more accurately. What's more interesting here is that this actually challenged prior conclusion that was done like a, a decade ago. And that says history-based prefetching is not effective for mobile apps. I think that might be one of the reasons why there's so few work in this area. So our results are very encouraging, hopefully can reopen this area again. Great, so now I have talked about a couple of techniques I developed, including both content-based and history-based categories. The natural next step is to see, okay, so which one is better? So the last piece of my dissertation specifically, specifically focused on testing prefetching and caching techniques, but that turned out to be a very expensive task because it requires the real user traces. Then I got to you know, hire the participants and so on. It's just super expensive. Uh, and those real user traces are defined as usage-based tests in the literature. And that is exactly what I want. Um, so this usage-based tests is actually a very emerging research area in software testing, very recent techniques. And they can automatically generate those tests. So for free, I don't need to hire anybody. 
right? So that is great. So I started to focus on those type of techniques, which are called test reuse techniques. Um, then to find out which technique is better for me to generate the test cases of my own need, I need to reproduce those techniques because I got to run them to see who's better. Also, I need to establish a standard pipeline to evaluate them because each technique is evaluated in their own way because this is a super emerging domain, so there's no foundation yet. And though basically this means their results are not comparable. So I established this pipeline to uh, enable this fair comparison of different techniques in the same way so that we can find out which one is better. So easier said than done. In this process, it actually took me a long time. The main reason simply is because I was not the developer of those techniques. Then I had to study those techniques, discuss with their authors, and make some modifications of their technique to make sure uh, they can work with my standard pipeline, right? And I also established a benchmark and a ground truth in order to evaluate them under the fair playground. And if you think about it, this is actually a common theme whenever we need to reuse other people's tools. And this phenomena is known as reproducibility crisis in academia. Actually, another finalist, James, also talked about this in cancer research. So this is a general thing in academia that has attracted more and more attention, which is super important, I think, because we all heard the saying that we should stand on the shoulders of the giants. But if the giants don't are not opening their shoulders for us, it's so hard for us to stand higher because we can reuse their work to advance the science or build upon prior work, right? So because of this, Fruiter is built with open science in mind. And this is a screenshot of Fruiter's website, and it also has a link with more details. But basically, uh, Fruiter took a very small step to reproduce a couple of techniques in a specific problem domain to show how this can be done. And the Fruiters, this tool itself has also got all three open science badges from ACM, so certified by ACM, meaning its artifacts are available, reproducible, and reusable. So I've been talking a lot just to wrap up what I have done in my dissertation. First, I did an empirical study to verify that the prefetch and the caching is such a good idea to do. And that encouraged a lot of follow-up techniques, including my own techniques. And the second, uh, I developed the first content-based technique for mobile apps which actually I'm very happy to see it already inspired a couple of follow-up works. So now we actually have some content-based techniques that didn't exist at all before Paloma. Also, I developed the HIP harness to make the existing history-based solutions practical again, to, so that they are practical to use for the mobile app domain. This challenged the prior conclusion and reopened this area. So lastly, I developed Fruiter to test which, te which technique is better. So I set this standard to establish a fair playground to compare different techniques. Great. So this last piece of my dissertation has actually expanded my dissertation scope from mobile app performance into software testing and open science as well, which are two very exciting areas that I'm continuing to explore these days after my PhD. And my dissertation has been published at the top conferences. Um, you can find the references in my dissertation of all the papers that contains way more detail than what I told you today. And my conference talks are also available online. This includes the precious physical conference recordings that we all miss these days. So last but not least, I would like to give a shout out to my amazing advisor, Nina Medvedevich, and my wonderful collaborators and friends who helped me along the way. So PhD is really hard, I'm not gonna lie. I don't think there's any way I can stand where I am right now without the help from so many amazing people and the sponsors of my work. So thank you very much.